out EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Houston Texans. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Defensively here, you're facing a top-five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high-powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. It's a 46-yard punt, two on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 24. To throw is Wentz. Looking for Ertz, but it's intercepted. Zach Cunningham with a pick. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Well, certainly not how he wanted to start his night. First throw of the game, an INT. Yeah, it's not easy, but he's got to try and wipe that one away from the memory banks. And let's face it, it's not often a quarterback and a defensive back have a lot in common. But one thing, because they have these individual type plays, they've got to have short memories, don't they? DB gets beat, wipe it away, quarterback throws a pick, has to do the same thing. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. We should mention, to go along with a great game he had last week, he was rightfully named AFC Offensive Player of the Week. And he shares that with his offensive line, the tight end, his fullback. He's looking for more and more of that in this game. They keep it with Barkley on first down. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And after his performance last week, everybody saw it unbelievable. You can expect a heavy dose of him again, I think. Without a doubt. I mean, why wouldn't you? Because once you establish yourself that way, it's not just him, okay? It's his offensive line, it's a tight end, it's your wide receivers, everyone now sharing in the load and sharing in the belief that if they do their job, they'll see another performance just like they saw the week before. And Barkley will try to punch it in. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Saquon Barkley with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36.
The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And Charles, if the season ended today, and it's not going to, we still have December yeah, left. We're, we're only in November. Uh, but they would be a wild card team. And that's great. They'd be in the playoffs, but you know they're trying to bump up to be one of those division leaders. That guarantees you at least one home game in the playoffs, and that's what you're really seeking. But there also isn't much margin for error for this team, right? Because right where they're sitting, a two-game losing streak could have them out of the playoffs. So they've got to make sure they continue to keep the momentum going. Absolutely. There's some sharks smelling blood in the water behind them. From the 39, Wentz. This is caught by Antonio Brown. You ain't doing nothing. And they got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. That's what we're used to seeing from him right there. Plays like that, why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage. Able to make adjustments all along the way. Doesn't matter where he lines up, where he releases from. Working his way into the second day, figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open. And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Throwing on second and three. Wentz over the middle, complete to Sega Whiteside. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. The Eagles into the red zone for the first time. This is first and goal from about the eight. Working from the gun, Wentz. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. J.J. Watt, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. It's second and goal, but now all the way back at the 14. 82, 82. Now wins. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Yeah, good game catch the ball in the backfield a week ago, and they're going to try and involve him in that way in this game as well. But you can tell scouting has taken over. They're making it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, defensively, they told us, hey, we've got to take him out of the passing game, limit it to just short runs, because he can really impact this offense. The offense stays out there. A big challenge here from this far back, but they're going for it on fourth and goal. Wentz to throw for it on four. And that is going to be incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And this Texans defense stands tall. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. He'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Back to throw. 
Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Avante Maddox. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. So first and 10 now from the 30. So after the INT, here's Lance. Over the middle, it's complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. I can't believe they even let you go. To throw, it's wins. And that is caught. And he has now tied the record. Touchdown. That's an early touchdown grab for last week's NFC Offensive Player of the Week. He was so electric, and they talked about it all week long. Have to try to contain it. And now for him, being able to focus on the task at hand and not just immediately assume that last week it totally carries over, but you got to like the start that he has, showing those great hands that we've seen from him throughout. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. They had the interception last drive, led to the tie touchdown. So 7-7 the score as they begin first and 10. A running play on first down, and it turns into a fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Second and ten. We'll get this out to Barkley complete. It'll be a gain of six, and they're going to have a third down. Of course, he was solid last week. AFC Offensive Player of the Week award. Two touchdowns in that game. Yeah, he's playing at a level right now where he's just breaking down defenses. Makes me remember when I was playing and my defensive back coach told me, listen, if you give up a touchdown pass, that's on me. I didn't coach you well enough. If you give up a second one, that's on you. And if there's a third one, I'm getting someone else in the game. <laughs> Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. And a couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Yeah, he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Second 
And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. And this is incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. On play action, Wentz looking deep downfield. That's going to be caught, and he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. A big play there, standing alone with a new NFL record 32nd touchdown, and the Eagles have taken the lead. Extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 14 to 7. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. That 7 nothing lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. Back to throw now on second and ten. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target, and it's third down. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. An incomplete pass on Eight, second three. down. It muddles Eight, things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Back to throw here. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. This quarterback now, four out of ten throwing the ball in this first half, but he's got a first down here. Out of the shotgun, they run with Barkley. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and 11 at the 35-yard line. Here we go, here we go. 60 Pittsburgh. Pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. On second down, here's Barkley. Now Barkley stripped of the football. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And his guys will set up shop at midfield at the 50-yard line. They were direct with us. They said last week is three fumbles. We want that to be an aberration. Another one right there, though. And it's going to drive them crazy because we saw them coaching, and all they talked about is the four points of pressure when carrying the ball. Fingertips, forearms, biceps, sternum or chest, keeping it high and tight, and they're not getting that done. All teams go over those points of pressure? They go over them all the time, and sometimes it becomes five points of pressure when you bring the second arm in to cradle the football. Now after the fumble recovery, it's Wentz. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. And hear the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means other guys on his team helped him out a lot. That They occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation. Allows him to get home. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Throwing now is Wins. Going up top. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Definitely worth taking in our deep shot here. He's already found the end zone twice here in the first half. Yeah, go back to that same well. They've had trouble containing him, but able to contain him on that play. 
An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Wins. And he comes back with one complete. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big time play for him. Not In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Justin Reed. And he's going to take this one back to the 37 yard line. J.J. Arcega, white side, the intended receiver. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. A give to Barkley out of the gun. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And unable to connect. Incomplete. I'll give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Normally, I'd say this will lead to a punt attempt, but this offense already shown in the first half that they'll go for it on fourth down. Oh, they should have already said, punt it, punt it. Head coach have already made that decision. Second quarter action with 159 remaining. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's going on. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's Wentz to throw. The loop ball, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Wentz. Over the middle here to Brown. Now Brown, oh, he lost the football. And the Texans say they have it. They do. Well, he did what he's known for. He made. The catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. The Eagles send out their punter now, standing just about on his own goal line. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. <laughs> Taking it about the 36. 46 yards on the boot. The coverage holds him to just three on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. 
Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll set up a throw. They'll rifle this one deep right side. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. What people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. He'll look to throw. He finds his target, Fuller. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. They'll drop the throw. And he's going to go down, sacked right around the 17. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Coach. Appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. So the Eagles with the lead, and they're going to get this football first as the third quarter gets underway. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. Uh, I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try and think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. To throw his wins. Flushed out right. And an alley to run. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Wins can pull it down when he needs to, and the 6'5 quarterback picks up the first down. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into his windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Wentz now to throw. Catch is made by Arcega Whiteside. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Here again is McCannon. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. The tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Third 
So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Too long for a field goal, too short to punt that in between range, and they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Wentz. That's to his running back complete. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Now they've been burned twice already on fourth down, but the third time's the charm as they keep the drive moving. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Working from the gun, Wentz, buying time to his left. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Two times, two times. You got three. Wentz going to throw. Flush to his right. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. And now following that sack, looks like we've got an injured man down there on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Set. Protein spill. And two stop. You. I'm coming after you. Mike, bravo. Right there, you have 55. There you go. And now the first throw for the backup quarterback. He's going to let this go for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Justin Reed. So the first interception of his career under center, and you knew it was going to happen sooner or later. It has to. And I know he feels like the world is just tumbling down at this moment, but there's got to be some veteran somewhere, some mentor that's going to tell him, hang in there, my man. Plenty more to come. Keep firing. They'll start out on the ground at Saquon Barkley. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Hey, hey, Wood. Second and 11. Pressure comes, and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Back to throw. Fuller brings it in over the middle. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. 23 yards on the play. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Saquon Barkley to the 40 and no further. So the razzle-dazzle didn't get him much. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Let's get it. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's second and eight. He almost had it. The big D lineman nearly had an interception. Instead, it falls down incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Looking to throw. Going to throw right side here, complete. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. 
I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Show some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll keep it on the ground. Akers. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Second and 10. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The offense going to stay out there. They've converted once, failed once. What can they do here on fourth down? They're going to look to throw. Over the middle complete. It's four. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. They'll set up to throw. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The linebacker Bobby Wagner able to get back in coverage and knock it free. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll look to throw here. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide-open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. That is caught. Hopkins for the Texans touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. Extra point right down the middle, and we are tied at 14. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kick's away here. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Jadevian Clowney in there to get him. And that is sack number six now for him on the year. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now wins. He's going deep for Brown. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be.
be down deep into Houston territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 75 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use momentum to launch another one. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. They run it with McKinnon. And he'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. They'll try and run with McKinnon. And he will take this one in for an eagle touchdown. Jarek McKinnon, his second touchdown on the season. And they are able to break the tie and move out in front here in this fourth quarter. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is now 21-14. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at his four. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Charles, this one not over, certainly, but you set the magic number earlier in this game at 20 points, said that they would need to hold them right around that marker under it. Yeah, what, what are you seeing here? Well, that, that number is still in play because we said, okay, 20 or under gives them a chance to win right on pace for being in that range. And guess what? Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. You can't block me. You can't block me. You can't block me. Lefty, lefty. Hey, get so after the INT, here's Wentz. Being chased out left. Incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, Make the right choice, get rid of it, live to fight another down. To throw on second and 10, Wentz, and it's incomplete. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, live to fight another down, right? Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. 21 yards there on third down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Tell you go. what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Throwing now is Wentz. Dancing to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Justin Houston. He's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Now Wentz on third down. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Three touchdown passes now for Carson Wentz. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. The point after is good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. 
This will be taken very short. And solid field position here to start as they get it out to the 40-yard line. There's no downplaying that we all knew that this was a critical possession. And to get a return like that to start things off, that's the spark that they needed. That's the spark they were looking for. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in it, and let him fling another one. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. On first down, they look downfield, and it's complete. And he is taken down deep in Philadelphia territory. A huge play there for Houston. 41 yards. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. When you got your backs in the shadow of your goal line, you've got to be physical in that situation because there's not a whole lot of space not a lot of wild plays that can be run there. And it's put up or shut up time defensively. Nice job just to make sure they didn't complete it on that play. Here's the second and seven. And he's got it. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. A seven-yard touchdown grab as his guys are back within a single score. So they get the score still down. The bottom line is they kept themselves in the game. They did keep hope alive, Brandon. That's exactly what they did. Now they've got to deliver and finish things off. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage, how would you say, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal... End the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. On first down now, run with McKinnon. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. Touchdown, Philadelphia! Jarek McKinnon, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. Extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. They drop to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. And now the throw going to Fuller, and he's got it. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. 
Let's go. Let's do it. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Fletcher Cox in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. The Texans on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 17. They'll set up a throw. He's going to let it fly. And incomplete, almost intercepted. Had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. And now fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Back to throw here. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Eagles defense able to hold. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Here we go, here we go. Here it comes. And they will take a knee here. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. So it's a victory here for the Philadelphia Eagles. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half to put this one on ice. And I know a lot of people watching this one we're thinking to themselves, I'll bet halftime was really interesting. Probably took the paint off the walls with some of the words that were said. <laughs> but I get the sense that it was much more of the adjustments they made. They came in with a game plan that we saw that didn't work in the first half. They made the adjustments necessary, went away from that, and then they got it together 